Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to talk to you about the AV1 video codec. We'll talk about what are codecs, how this one compares to the existing ones that we already use and what it kind of means for media streaming over the next few years. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so AV1 has been in the news recently. A few months ago, Netflix announced it was starting to stream AV1 content to some of its Android clients. Then Google recently said something about AV1 connected with Google Duo. And then uh, MediaTek announced that uh, its Dimensity 1000 5G chipset is able to decode AV1 in hardware. So it's kind of a keyword that's coming up more and more often. And today I want to look at it so that we understand the impact it will have for us as consumers, mainly as consumers of streaming video. So let's start by looking what is a codec. It's kind of a mashup word of encoder, decoder, codec, and it's the software that's used to compress video files. Now, why do we need to compress video files? If you take a 4K movie, two hour 4K movie, if that was uncompressed, it would take five terabytes to store it and then five terabytes to stream it across to your smartphone or to your laptop or smart TV. Now, of course, five terabytes is an enormous amount of uh, information. And then, of course, if you imagine Netflix, they've got all those movies up there, you know, five terabytes per movie. Well, that's just, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So we need a way of compressing a high quality compression of video files down to something smaller without losing the quality, and that's a codec. So of course we've been using codecs for a long time. If you go back and look at let's say DVD, then a DVD is what, 4.7 gigabytes. So there was a codec, which is MPEG-2 video, which was used to reduce that file down to 4.7 gigabytes so that it would fit on a DVD. After that came Blu-ray and that popularized the codec H.264. We've also got H.265, which is kind of gonna be the recommended codec when we get into kind of the 8K TV era. And now we've also got AV1. Now in a traditional business, uh, a, a, an entrepreneur might invent something, they would invest time in developing it, they would pay engineers, they would pay building material costs, energy bills and so on, and they would spend a lot of money before a product is actually brought to market. When it's finally brought to market, they would sell that product, and then the fact that it was sold would recover the cost. And a successful business is one that's able to develop products, sell them, and then recover the cost that they had to spend to develop the product, and then actually make a, pro a profit, and then go on in the cycle and so on. Now that's also true for physical products, also true for software. So for example, if I'm a game designer, I would have a team, let's say, uh, coders, engineers, musicians, artists, level designers, and again, they would all need to be paid salaries, there would be a building, an office, and so on. And at the end of it, there wouldn't be a physical product, maybe there's not a cartridge, or a ROM, or a DVD, or whatever, it's just maybe a digital download, but it's still sold, and that money gets put back into the next game and recovers the costs of, of what it took to, to develop that game. Now, what happens if you invent an algorithm? Now, an algorithm isn't something you can give on to digital download. You're not going to go onto iTunes and say, oh, I'll have three algorithms, please. You know, it's not something you can buy, but it's something that wants to be used in other products. So what happens is if I invented something, a way of compressing video, because that's what we're talking about, then I might sell that idea to other companies, companies who make smartphones and smart TVs and laptops and so on, so they could use my technology. And what I would say is, well, I can have a set to them for a fixed price, like here, you just have it for this money here. Or I could say, well, actually, why don't we come to agreement for every device that you ship that has this, um, this technology in it, you, you give me one cent or one euro cent. Okay, and then we can say, great, and then as you sell more and more of them, the money of me developing that algorithm comes back to me, and it's only one cent on each kind of thing. And that's actually what happens with lots of technology, including with uh, video codecs. The problem is the idea of paying a royalty fee for an algorithm or for a technique of doing something is open to all kinds of abuse. 
So there are going to be good actors and bad actors, but of course there could be renegotiations of fees. At one point I demanded one cent, but actually later on I say, actually I want 10 cents now, or I want a dollar, or I want a euro, you know. And so, but and at this point the, the, the producers who've been making their products with my algorithm in it now suddenly are kind of like hostage because they say, well, we can't do it with it and we've got to pay so much. To do, you know, so it's, it's a bad situation. Or maybe the other way around. A big corporate says, well, actually, we were paying you uh, one cent. Now we want to pay you 0.01 cent because we just don't want to pay you any more money. And so there can be good and bad renegotiations of the fees. And then on top of that, you get the idea of patent trolls who suddenly buy up some obscure patent from 1869 and then come and sue me and sue everybody else saying, well, we own the rights to this technology, which of course, and often their claims are are just tenuous uh, at most. So basically with Codex, MPEG-2, H.264, H.265, these are all laden with patents and with royalty fees. And sometimes those fees are waived, sometimes they aren't waived. Sometimes the patents are pulled together to kind of defend them and sometimes they're not. And it can be actually quite a very complicated process to understand who owns what. For example, Samsung own 4,000 patents related to H265. So that's a, a pretty strong kind of lock hold on uh, that kind of codec. So the idea comes that if you don't want to get involved in patents and royalty patents, wouldn't it be good to invent a technology that has no royalties and no patents? And that's the idea of AV1. The idea that uh, a video compression technique that isn't burdened down with all of these patents and isn't burdened down by having to pay somebody somewhere uh, a royalty fee for every phone, camera, TV, laptop that gets shipped. Uh, it's all royalty free. And that was the main uh, idea of AV1. Now, whether it's managed to do that or not is still up in the air. There are patent trolls who've woken up and said, well, actually, we think your technology still steals from our patents. Uh, and nothing's actually gone to court yet, but uh, these patient tolls um, are very patient. They, uh, they wait around, they, they're not gonna let it go easily. So we'll see whether there is ever such, gonna be ever such a thing as a, a royalty-free video codec. The argument is it uses techniques and ideas and things that have been used in many, many other uh, uh, codecs before, so therefore there must be a patent uh, infringement here somewhere. So the first key characteristic about uh, AV1 is it's royalty free, which means also it's open source friendly. So if you wanted it in Linux, if you want it in Chrome OS, if you want it in Android, if you want it to put it in your own project that's an open source project, you can do because it is uh, open source friendly in that sense. But also the question is, is it any good? So how does it compare to H.264 to H.265? Well, to, before we get into that, we need to talk a bit about bit rates. So I talked at the beginning about five terabyte movie. Now, if you imagine a bit rate is the rate at which the bits, the ones and the zeros are streamed, let's say from Netflix down to your phone. Now, the less bits that need to be sent, the lower the bit rate, the better it is for the network, for disk storage, for uh, you know the performance that you can get because you're not limited by your network, your ISP, your internet connection, or whatever. So lower bit rates are, are good, high bit rates are, are bad. Now, each codec has its kind of characteristics about its uh, bit rate. Now, the difference between H.264 and H.265 was that H.265 basically halved the bit rate. So if something was recorded in, uh, let's say 40 megabits per second, then in H.265 you can get the same quality in around 20 megabits a second. Now I've got a whole video which I will link to that talks about the difference between megabytes a second and megabits per second, kilobits per second, kilobytes per second. So if you're a bit confused about that terminology, do make sure you check out that video. Of course, although we want to reduce the bit rate to have a better performance for streaming and for storage, if you go too low, the quality falls apart. Now, the video clip I'm showing you is uh, one that I've made and I've really encoded it at a very, very low bit rate. And you can see the whole picture just uh, is full of artifacts and compression artifacts. Uh, and that's what basically happens, but at a much smaller scale, as we lower the bit rate, the quality starts to fall apart in these images. Now, AV1 is in the same ballpark as H.265. So it's, a, it's the leading edge of bitrate technology. So for example, I had took a, uh, a clip with my smartphone, 4K recording. It came out at 42 megabits per second directly out of the phone. 
uh, it was a 15 second click, clip and I used it to kind of re-encode it on different things. So if I re-encoded that to H.265 and to AV1, for the same quality that dropped down to let's say 20, 21 megabits a second. So that's what we're talking about uh, in terms of bit rate. Now just for comparison, so you understand is 42, is 20 a big, to fit a movie, a two hour movie onto a DVD, it'd be using five uh, megabits per second. So this 4K video was 42 megabits a second out of my phone and a DVD would have been five megabits. So you can see a huge increase from five to 42, but a DVD was 480p, whereas of course 4K is much, much bigger. In fact, probably 25 times as many pixels are being compressed. So by going from five megabits to 42 megabits, but increasing the size of the image from 480p to 2160p, I've actually showing that H.264 is at least three times better than what was in MPEG video two, MPEG two video. And actually, if we then go to H.265 and AV1, we're showing it six times better than uh, MPEG two and, and twice as good as uh, H.264. Now the techniques that I use to compress a video, I won't talk about them here, I think this will make this two video too long, but there will be an article over on the Android Authority website where I do talk a little bit about how this compression actually works, if that's the kind of thing that interests you. Now AV1 claims it's 30% better than H.265. Now of course, that is an interesting question. How do you measure the quality? You can do things like looking at the peak uh, signal to noise ratio in the image. You can do some statistics on the image itself. You can show it to a bunch of people and say, which do you think uh, is the best picture here? So what I've done is I've taken my 15 second video clip that I got out of my smartphone and I've re-encoded it. And what I'm gonna show you now is some pictures to show you the differences between H.264, H.265 and AV1. And let's see whether we can see any differences uh, in these pictures. So this is one frame from the encoded picture. Now, obviously, we are now, of course, seeing this having been re-encoded onto YouTube. You're seeing this compressed down in terms of the resolution because it was a 4K image. This is a HD video and there are four images. So ignoring all of that, we have to understand that it's hard from a perceptual point of view to look at the difference. In fact, when you look at this one, there's not really much you can tell between the four images. So we're gonna have to zoom in and do some pixel peeping to see what we can find out. So if we zoom in a bit and look at these four images, clearly the original is the best one in the top left hand corner. And I think if you look at it long enough, you'll see that the H.264 image on the right, bottom right, is the worst of the three compressed ones. And then looking at H.265 and AV1, both at 22 megabits a second, you can basically see it's pretty much a tie. Now if you force me to pick one of them, I think if you look at the petals, the way the pink is represented on the petals in the top right hand of each image, you'll see that AV1 probably has a slight edge over H.265. Now, one of the interesting things that Google said in its announcement related to Google Duo, its video uh, chat application, is that AV1 is better at lower bit rates. So let's drag down the bit rate and see what we can get. So this is the same uh, video file now encoded at 10 megabits per second. Again, top left is original, clearly the best picture. And bottom right is H.264, clearly the worst. It's now at 10 megabits a second. And, and H.264 doesn't claim it can do better at such a low bit rate. It should really be at least 20 megabits a second to give it a fair chance. And clearly you can see at 10 megabits a second is not a very good picture. And then again, if you look at H.265 and AV1, pretty close there. But if you look at the grass at the top left hand of the H.265 uh, picture, you will see that actually AV1 is doing a better job at representing the grass there. So I would say that when you start to drop the bit rate, it looks like AV1 has an advantage in terms of fidelity. So we can probably say that AV1 is actually a better codec than H.265, royalty free, and maybe up to 30% better. That's the numbers that the some people are quoting. So this is all good news. Where do I sign up? HV AV1 is the future. It's better than anything we've currently got. Royalty free, open source friendly, and better quality. There's a tiny problem. It's, well, in fact, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge problem. It all comes down to the encoding part. Now the decoding part 
seems to be working okay. I can watch AV1 videos using uh, on my Windows desktop okay. Uh, uh, Netflix saying that it works okay inside of their client on Android. These are all software versions. There's no hardware support yet, except for that MediaTek chip that uh, says now that it can do hardware. The problem is the encode. So let's look at some numbers. So if I wanted to take my 15 second 4K clip and convert it into H.264, if I use just software only, it takes about one minute to encode 15 seconds of video. So it's about four times longer than the original video clip. If I use hardware encoding, now my NVIDIA graphics card in my PC supports hardware encoding of H.264, that reduces it down to 20 seconds. So that's slightly longer than what there already is, but of course 20 seconds for a 15 second clip is not bad, that's manageable. And if we go over to software only encoding of H.265, a 15 minute clip takes five minutes to encode in software. But again, if I use my NVIDIA card, it also does a very good job at H.265. So H.265 in hardware also takes about 20 seconds on my PC. So it looks like we can get H.265 encoded videos in just a bit longer than the time of the original video clip itself. But when I turn to try this on AV1, the best time I could get on my PC, software only, because there is no hardware available and certainly no hardware that I've got in my PC, to do a 15 second clip to encode it took 10 minutes. So you take a 15 second clip of video and you need 10 minutes to convert it into AV1. And that was at the very best optimal settings I could get and probably not like for like with what I was doing in H.264 and H.265. If I try to tweak it down to similar qualities, one experiment I did actually took 44 minutes to convert a 15 uh, second clip of video. So if we talk about a one hour movie, I've gone and I've recorded uh, my vacation. I've got us all you know, enjoying our exotic vacation and I've, and I've made a movie and I want to store it in AV1. How long would it take me to convert an hour of movie into uh, AV1? Well, in comparison, if I was to do H.264 and H.265 in hardware, it'd take 80 minutes to convert my 60 minute movie. And AV1 took 40 hours, 40 hours. So that's almost two days to encode the video clip in, uh, in AV1. So basically that's a disaster. That's, no, that's not manageable in any sense whatsoever. And this is the big problem with AV1 at the moment. It's still relatively immature in terms of the efficiency of the software and support for hardware. Now, obviously that's gonna change. That's gonna change over the next little while. We've already started to see, as I said, announcements from MediaTek. So we're gonna see announcements from other companies over the, the next couple of years that are gonna improve hardware support. The software support's gonna get better. But today, uh, in the middle of 2020, AV1 is not ready for prime time yet. Now, I hope maybe I can make this same video in 12 or 18 months from now and I can say, hey, remember that video I made? Well, actually now, and I'm like, we'll see what happens. But for today, if you wanted to say, hey, I've got to actually want to save disk space and compress all my uh, movies down into AV1, you, you can't do it. You would just go gray waiting for them all to convert. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not subscribe to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.